Acceleration forces operate in different ways upon the human body. Acceleration can affect the body's cardiovascular, pulmonary, and neurological systems. Most general aviation pilots are not exposed to the same high accelerations that aerobatic and military pilots must endure. However, it is important for all pilots to understand the effects of acceleration forces on the human body. Pilots can unexpectedly get into an unusual flight attitude, causing them to experience a rapid onset of acceleration forces. Speed is defined as the rate of motion. It is the distance one travels in a certain amount of time. Speed equals distance over time. Velocity is defined as the rate of motion coupled with the direction of travel. Velocity equals speed and direction. Acceleration is defined as a change in velocity per unit of time. It is produced when either speed or direction or both change. Acceleration is measured in feet per second squared or meters per second squared. The Earth produces a form of acceleration known as gravity. This affects everyone and everything on the ground and in the air. Acceleration produced by gravity is represented by a constant value of 32 feet per second squared. As an example, a free falling object will increase its velocity by 32 feet per second for every second it falls. The three types of acceleration are linear, radial, also called centrifugal, and angular. Let's look at what each type of acceleration represents. Linear acceleration reflects a change in speed, either an increase or decrease without a change in direction. Linear acceleration occurs during takeoff, landing, or on level flight with a change in throttle setting. Radial or centrifugal acceleration is the result of a change in direction without a change in speed. An example of this type of acceleration is when a pilot performs a sharp turn, pulls out of a dive, or pushes over into a dive. Radial acceleration becomes most relevant to pilots because of the adverse effects it has on the human body. Angular acceleration results from a simultaneous change in both speed and direction. This kind of acceleration takes place during a tight spin. To better understand the effects of acceleration on the human body, it is necessary to discuss in more detail the concept of G-forces. Inertial force is a result of acceleration produced by Earth's gravity. This force acting upon a mass is termed 1G. In aviation, we refer to G-forces as forces resulting from acceleration exposure. For example, an airplane capable of pulling 7 Gs can expose the pilot to acceleration intensity 7 times the force of Earth's gravity. To imagine what a G-force experience is like, Envision that your body weight has suddenly increased seven times. Then try to perform ordinary movements like moving your head, arms, or legs. A pilot weighing 150 pounds on Earth would weigh the equivalent of 1,050 pounds at seven Gs. The position of the body relative to the acceleration applied allows us to classify G-forces into three types, transverse, lateral, and vertical. A transverse G-force is also known as GX. It is the force applied to the front or back of the body. A positive transverse G, which is front to back, is typically experienced during takeoff and while increasing airspeed during level flight. A negative transverse G, which is back to front, 
is experienced during landing, in-flight air braking, and while decreasing airspeed during level flight. Transverse G accelerations affect the body's equilibrium system. Equilibrium originates from the inner ear, causing pitch up and pitch down illusions. These illusions are discussed in detail in the training module on spatial disorientation. A second type of G-force is lateral or G-Y. This is where the force is applied to the lateral axis of the body. Lateral G's occur when a pilot is exposed to acceleration from side to side. Lateral G's occur during a vertical roll, a rudder roll, an aileron roll, or an uncontrolled flat spin. The third type of G-force is vertical, or GZ. Vertical G-force is applied to the vertical axis of the body. A pilot exposed to this type of acceleration from head to foot experiences positive G's. In contrast, negative G's are experienced from the foot to the head. Positive vertical G's are usually experienced during sharp turns, an inside loop, or while pulling out of a dive. Similarly, you can experience negative vertical G's during an inverted turn, an inverted loop, or while pushing over into a dive. Vertical G's, whether positive or negative, are potentially the most dangerous type of G forces because they can result in sudden pilot incapacitation during flight. There are several factors about G forces that impact an individual's tolerance level. Magnitude of the G-force is the number associated with the amount of G-force applied to the body. For example, a low magnitude G-force is more tolerable than a high one. General aviation pilots are rarely exposed to positive vertical G's higher than 2.5, while fighter pilots are routinely exposed to seven or more positive vertical G's. Duration of exposure is how long a person has been exposed to a G-force. Short duration is more tolerable than long duration. Experiencing three positive vertical G's for several seconds is not difficult for the average individual, but having to endure it for over 15 seconds becomes physically challenging. Rate of acceleration, known as the G onset rate, is measured in units of G per second. A slow or gradual G onset rate is more tolerable than a high G onset rate. Acceleration exposure from zero to seven positive vertical G's at a rate of one-tenth of one G per second is more tolerable than a rate of one G per second. Direction of force is defined by the axis of the body where the G-force is applied. By determining the direction of the G-force, you can determine the G-type. Exposure to vertical positive G's can result in sudden in-flight incapacitation. Exposure to transverse G's can cause breathing difficulties. Exposure to lateral G's can cause problems in maintaining yoke or stick control of the aircraft. Cargo up to 90 in the other direction, a couple G's pull back. Heart to eye distance. The greater the vertical distance between the eyes and the heart, the lower the individual tolerance of exposure to positive vertical G's. In other words, the greater the distance between the heart and eyes, 
the more difficult it is for the heart to pump enough blood to the brain and eyes during exposure to positive vertical Gs. Furthermore, a pilot seated in an upright position has a lower tolerance to positive vertical Gs than a pilot seated in a reclined position. Keep in mind that self-imposed stress, such as fatigue, dehydration, and alcohol consumption, as well as cardiovascular and pulmonary medical problems, may decrease individual tolerance to G-forces. Remember, you are exposed to a G-force from your head to your feet when you perform a sharp turn or an inside loop. Most symptoms associated with exposure to positive vertical Gs are related to the pooling of blood in the abdomen and extremities. This results in an inability of the blood to reach critical organs, such as the brain and eyes. When blood pools into your lower body and extremities, the blood supply to your brain decreases, which then leads to oxygen deprivation. Since the eyes are an extension of the brain and are vulnerable to the lack of oxygen, eyes are most likely to be affected by the exposure of positive vertical Gs. If the initial magnitude of the G-force reaches about 4.1 positive vertical Gs, a condition known as grayout will occur. If you do not stop the ongoing flight maneuver at this point, Within a few seconds, you will experience a total blackout. If you still do not stop the ongoing maneuver and the initial magnitude of the G-force becomes about 5.4 positive vertical Gs, within a few seconds, you can experience G-induced loss of consciousness. This is also known as G-lock, which can result in losing control of the aircraft. Even if you recover from G-lock, there is a period of amnesia and confusion that may occur for about 20 to 30 seconds. This can also result in impaired aircraft control, which can be critical if you are at low altitude. The progression of symptoms from gray out to blackout and then to G-lock can occur very quickly depending upon the G-onset rate. Having a high rate of seven Gs per second one can experience G-lock in about four to seven seconds. Today's very maneuverable high-performance aircraft can achieve very high G-onset rates. Unfortunately, this can result in sudden G-lock without any preceding visual symptoms. Other effects of exposure to positive vertical Gs include breathing difficulties, heartbeat abnormalities, motion sickness, muscular fatigue, and abdominal arm, leg, and neck pain. 